So I have been watching and am getting really close to finishing and I can pretty much know how it ends. So I can go ahead and talk about it now, but I've been watching The Last Dance. Uh, it was an ESPN documentary about the 90s, 80s and 90s Chicago Bulls dynasty and Michael Jordan himself. And being a child of the 90s, uh, I was very aware of Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls throughout my childhood. <clears throat> I mean, it was in the culture. Uh, I think even more so than, than you know, NBA basketball is today with, like, LeBron James. Uh, and I, it, uh, it was definitely a huge part of pop culture, right? The Chicago Bulls, right? The dynasty. They dominated um, the early to mid-90s and Michael Jordan just being who Michael Jordan is. Um, but I was never a big NBA fan. And I've never been a professional basketball fan, per se. Uh, we watched games from time to time when I was younger. I saw Michael Jordan play. Uh, my dad had a friend who was a die-hard uh, Michael Jordan and Chicago Bulls fan. And he would come over uh, on some game days and just spend the day watching the game. He'd bring over his kids, and um, we were all around similar age. And... Uh, it's just something I remember from my childhood very vividly. And um, like everyone, obviously, I mean, I just, Michael Jordan was like an icon, right? It, it superseded basketball. It was much bigger than that. It was like this dominant figure and someone who who uh, wanted to win at all costs. Like, there was a lot that people knew in terms of his competitive nature and things like that. Like, you knew that Michael Jordan was a perfectionist, that, uh, you know, uh, his highest desire was to win and win big. He didn't just want to win. He wanted to dominate and, um, you know, kind of prove his and his team's superiority. And this was just what you knew growing up. This was the Chicago Bulls in the 1990s. And you remember Michael Jordan everywhere, right? Michael Jordan was... Uh, in McDonald's ads, Michael Jordan was um, selling underwear, Michael Jordan was on billboards, Michael Jordan was in movies, we had Space Jam come out, like, it, it was definitely a part of my life, even though I was never really an NBA fan. However, I am a fan of competitive sports in general. I love, um, I just love diving into the mentality of, of competitors, like, no matter what the sport is. Um, with the exception of maybe like curling. I don't know if I could get into a, a curling <laughs> documentary talking about the rigors of curling, but it doesn't matter who it is. I, I love hearing about these these outliers, right? I love of learning about these outliers who, who uh, just are heads and shoulders above the competition. And the, the one thing they all have in common is work ethic and I love it and I love to see it displayed. I love when there's a documentary or some sort of film footage of it or a book written about it. I love it. I've always loved reading books about sports figures. And um but this documentary, man. This documentary is one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. And I don't know if I mentioned this before, but it's an ESPN documentary, but it is now on Netflix. They just released it like uh, a week or two ago on Netflix. And it's fairly new. It just, you know, this is a, a month old or something, maybe two months old. It was on ESPN first and then was released to Netflix. But I've done a lot of documentary reviews on this channel, and this might be the best one I've ever reviewed. Um, and I've, I've watched documentaries on a ton of different subjects, um, from, you know, um, cults and... Uh, far-right extremists and uh, um, wars, I, all kinds, I, I, the spectrum, right? The spectrum of documentaries. And um, I really think this is one of the best put together documentaries I've ever seen. Just because it was really creative, I loved how they lined it up. Okay, so this is following um, the 
97, 98 final season that Michael Jordan was with the Chicago Bulls and basically the end of the dynasty. The team was um, falling apart slash starting over uh, in the following year. They were getting rid of their head coach and who had been with them through, through all of this domination in the 90s. And Michael Jordan said he wouldn't play for any other coach. And, uh, you know, it, it was... They knew going into the season that it was the end, that it was the, it was the final go, the last dance, right? And um, the way, though, that they use that season to go back and look at the history and how they got to be where they're at, it lines up so perfectly. Like, it, it'll show something in the 97-98 season, and then it'll take you back, right? It, it's, it was so neat the way they did it, though, because they started at the beginning of the season, which would coincide with something that happened or something that needed to be explained from when Michael Jordan was first entering the NBA, right? So it goes the beginning of the season, beginning of career. Then it goes a little bit further into the season. Uh, the Bulls are, are having a hard time when they first start the season out, and they go back to another time when they were having a hard time in, you know, the mid-80s. And then uh, they go a little further in the season, and they get to, um, I don't know, something that happened with the team, and then they go back and explore something that happened with the team that was similar or somehow coincides or there's a backstory behind it in the late 80s, early 90s, and then it, it's so crazy, it was, it's like, it's slowly moving, like, like this, like, this is the, this is the season, the 90, the final season, and this is the beginning of a career, and it just keeps going back and forth, and getting closer and closer together, right, so it's like, boom, they go back and explore this thing, then, boom, they go back and explore this thing, which gets a little closer, and then eventually it kind of meets at the very end, and like how we got to where we're at. Dude, it was so creative the way they did it. And it would show a timeline. It was so cool. It would be like um, March 97, then it would be like back to like, you know, um, March of, uh, of, of 1989 or whatever. And it was, it's just incredible. I love the way they did it. And like I said, I was very aware of Michael Jordan. I was very aware of the Chicago Bulls. Um, it was in it was in the news, not just sports news. It was in the news. Like every couple of days, there was something about the Chicago Bulls or Michael Jordan in the news. Um, that was just life as a kid in the 1990s. And um, so you almost inadvertently followed the story, whether or not you were super interested in the sport. Um, but this documentary opened my eyes to a ton of stuff that I had no idea about, that a lot of people were probably very aware of, but I didn't know a lot of it. Like, I knew Michael Jordan was this super competitive guy and that um, he was kind of tough on his teammates and, uh, you know, very perfectionist, very driven to win and win at all costs mentality. Um, I knew something about that he liked to gamble, but I didn't realize it became a big media controversy. And they go into that into detail. Like this thing is so detailed. It goes into like everything you've ever heard about the bulls. It goes deep on it. So Michael Jordan's gambling, um, Scotty Pippen being like the most underpaid NBA basketball player of all time for his talent. Um, had no idea about that. I didn't know that. I just knew that Scotty Pippen was up there with Michael Jordan as one of the best basketball players in the NBA throughout the 90s, and, you know, one of the best basketball players of all time. I had no idea that, despite being, like, the number two player in the NBA uh, at the time, he was, like, 125th in terms of how much he was paid. Insane. I almost shed a tear for Scottie Pippen watching this thing. It was crazy. Um, it goes deep on Dennis Rodman and his life story. Like, the first three episodes, it covers Jordan on the first one. His kind of, like, childhood, how he got to uh, starting in the NBA um, when he was first drafted in the NBA. And then the next episode is Scottie Pippen. And the next episode is Dennis Rodman. And they kind of go like that. 
at least those three key figures cover in depth, cover those figures. And then, um, and the coaches too, it goes deep on the coaches, deep on the owner. Um, I don't know what else, like, what could they have left out that was a, a, a big thing that happened with the Bulls? You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm at a loss. I don't know what else they could have covered. I feel like they covered everything they possibly could. And that's what's great about a 10-part series is you can go deep on stuff. I'm glad this wasn't a two-hour documentary. It was a 10-hour series. And I love that, man. When you really want to explore something, you got to go with the with the series, not the not the movie. A movie just can't, you can't fit it all into two hours, especially something like the Bulls dynasty and the history of the, some of the greatest players in basketball history. Like, you're not going to cover that in detail um, in, in a, in a two-hour documentary. Um, but yeah, all kinds of stuff they went into, man. Like, um, what else? So they, they covered Dennis Rodman from the beginning, his childhood to his college, uh, high school and college basketball days to his uh, coming into the NBA. And he wasn't the Dennis Rodman we think of when you think of Dennis Rodman when he first came into the NBA. But he goes into um, that and it like his kind of transformation and how he was kind of a wild dude and the team just kind of knew that and actually um, allowed him to be that way, uh, allowed him to express himself and uh, let loose from time to time. It, it, it's crazy, man. It was crazy how detailed this thing was. But um, what else? Scottie Pippen refusing to go in for the final play of a game because he wasn't going to get the basketball. Like, crazy. And the whole um, situation with Scottie Pippen not playing for a good portion of the final season, uh, with that final uh, 98, 97, 98 season, uh, just stuff that I didn't know about because I wasn't super into basketball. I knew um, the broad picture, but I didn't know all these details. So, really cool. I, I can't recommend this documentary enough. It's one of the best I've ever seen, as I've already said probably like three times. You have to watch it. Even if you're not a sports fan, man, it's interesting. It's good. It's really good. But, uh, yeah. Those are my thoughts on The Last Dance. Fantastic. Fantastic. If you like videos like this where I just talk about whatever's on my mind, I, I talk about what I feel like talking about on a daily basis, subscribe for more because that's what I do. I, uh, I try to put out one video a day where I talk about something I feel like it has some sort of relevance um, that people might find entertaining or enjoyable or want to start a discussion about. Um, but full gamut could be anything, could be, um, documentary like this, could be, uh, something related to politics, something related to, uh, self-improvement, could be, uh, my comic book collection. Every day it's something different, but if you're into that sort of thing, subscribe for more, like the video, share the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully.